Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at link aggregation in TrueNAS. So what is link aggregation and why would you do it? Well, if you've got two or more Ethernet controllers on your TrueNAS machine, link aggregation is a way of bundling all of those links together into one logical link that allows you to get more functionality out of it than if you leave them as each individual connections. So there's a couple of different ways to do that, and we're going to take a look at all of them in this video. So let's take a look. Once we log into the TrueNAS dashboard, we can see that we've actually got two Ethernet ports configured. So the first one is the IGB0, which is the Intel card that's installed on the machine. We can see that the link state is up, which means that TrueNAS can detect the card. And we can see that there's actively traffic going in and out of the card itself, which means it's the active port. It's the one that TrueNAS is using to send and receive data. The other one that we have configured is the Realtek NIC RE0. That's the onboard port on the motherboard. And we can see that whilst the link state here is up, i.e. it's being detected, there's no traffic actively going through this port. It's the passive port. To create our new aggregate link, I'm going to go ahead and select network on the left hand side and then interfaces. And we can see all of our physical interfaces listed here. I'm going to go ahead and select the blue add button in the top right hand side. And then there's a number of options that we're prompted with. So the first one is the type. We're going to go ahead and select link aggregation. And then we're being asked for a name. So the naming convention here is quite strict. It must be called LAGG and then a number afterwards. So link aggregation with a number afterwards. And the LAGG must be in lowercase. So we're going to go ahead and call it LAGG0. Not required to add a description, so I'm not going to add one here at the moment. And then I'm going to select DHCP for how it should be assigned its IP address. I'm going to have the router give it one automatically. You can assign a static IP address here down at the bottom. I'm just not going to do that here. There are five different lag settings that we can select here, and we're just going to take a very quick look at all of them. The first option in the drop down menu here is Link Aggregation Control Protocol, or LACP, which is the option that most people are probably looking for when they start looking into link aggregation at all. Essentially, what this does is it takes the combined bandwidth of all of your controllers and it sums it up. So if you have two 1 gig ports, you can have one 2 gig port. If you have three 1 gig ports, LACP will allow you to combine it into one 3 gig port. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as selecting LACP from the drop down menu, hitting save, and suddenly getting 2 gig networking. The rest of your home network also needs to support the protocol, or it simply won't work. So if you've got any consumer level switches, you're probably not going to be able to configure this protocol. You need to be in the prosumer or enterprise space before you'll have that option on your router or switch. And then you'll also need to go into the router or switch and configure it there. The total bandwidth available out of multiple aggregate links is also always going to be less than the total bandwidth that's possible out of a single physical device. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you have one 10 gig controller, you can have up to 10 gigs connectivity on that physical device. However, if you have 10 1 gig controllers, you'll never achieve the same bandwidth that you get out of the one physical device. Why? Because there's an awful lot of overhead that needs to be communicated when you use LACP. So some of the potential bandwidth is being consumed by all of the communication that's involved in linking all of those links together. So one 10 gig physical device will always beat 10 1 gig physical devices in link aggregation format. And finally, you may still not achieve what you're actually looking for. A lot of people use link aggregation in the hopes that it will increase the bandwidth available for a single device. For example, if I have a desktop PC with a single 10 gig network card and a TrueNAS machine that has 10 gig networking available through link aggregation, the hope is often that the desktop PC will be able to copy files and folders at a speed of 10 gigs. But unfortunately, that's not the case. But if it doesn't do that, then what does it actually do? Well, it's true that the bandwidth available to TrueNAS has increased, it's just that it's scaled horizontally instead of vertically. So instead of one 10 gig connection, what you can have is 10 1 gig connections. You can imagine how that's useful in a small office where you've got 10 desktop machines with a 1 gig connection, and they're all trying to access the server at the same time. Instead of one tenth of a gig in terms of speed, they get 1 gig each. Useful. So in the drop down menu here, we have a number of other options. We're going to come back to failover, but first I'd like to talk about load balance, round robin, and none. 
Load balance allows TrueNAS to make an intelligent decision about which physical device it will send outgoing traffic. So for example, if one of your physical devices is saturated with an incoming connection, it might choose the other physical device to send the outgoing traffic. This doesn't impact incoming traffic for reasons that are completely beyond the scope of this video. So just know that this only affects outgoing traffic. It's useful in a limited set of circumstances, probably not as much at home as it would be in a prosumer or enterprise environment, but it does have some use uh, there. Round Robin is a very similar protocol, but instead of making an intelligent decision, TrueNAS just cycles through all of the physical devices. Again, it only affects outgoing traffic, not incoming, once again, for reasons that are outside the scope of this video. Finally, none disables the controller entirely. It means that the lag interface is not used without you having to actually delete the interface itself. It's useful if you want to change some of the physical devices that are installed in the lag or make some other changes where you don't want to delete the entire config. I am going to go ahead here and select the failover config, which is the one that I would like to use today. As some of you may have guessed, the failover protocol allows TrueNAS to use one of the physical devices as the primary connection that it will use all of the time. And if something were to happen to that device or link, it were to go down or fail in some way, TrueNAS will automatically fail over to the secondary or tertiary connection, whatever number of devices you have configured. This means that even if you've got a physical fault with your network device, you can still reach the TrueNAS machine over the network, which is incredibly handy, especially if you don't have easy access to the machine to replace a physical fault. The next option here is lag interfaces, which allows us to select the physical devices that we would like to add to our link aggregation. So I'm going to select both of these here, but we do need to talk about the TrueNAS UI and your ability to select lag interfaces, especially when using the failover protocol. Essentially, if we look at the FreeBSD documentation for link aggregation and the failover protocol, we can see that it specifies the first interface added is the primary port and any interfaces added after that are the failover devices. If we look at the TrueNAS GUI though, there doesn't seem to be a way to easily specify which device should be the primary. So we can see here I added both the Intel and Realtek NIC at the same time, and it automatically sorted itself alphabetically. If I go ahead and remove the Intel NIC and just leave the Realtek one, and then go ahead and re-add the Intel one, it again sorts itself alphabetically. So there doesn't seem to be a way for me to specify that I would want the real Technic as the primary interface without possibly renaming the device itself or doing something weird. I did test this a number of times in a number of different ways, including creating the link aggregation with just the real Technic and then adding the Intel one after the fact. And I got all sorts of funny, unreliable results that I wouldn't want to recommend here. For me, this seems to be working out okay because I do actually actually want the Intel NIC as the primary. Most of the rest of the settings on this page are ones that we won't want to touch. So for example, disabling hardware offloading is really only useful if you've got some virtual machines that are going to be using a specific physical device. We don't want to do that here. The MTU size is set to 1500, your maximum transmission unit, and that's the default for essentially the internet uh, and is unlikely to be something that you want to change here. We also don't have any other options that we'd like to specify. Once we're happy with our settings, we can go ahead and select apply here. The next thing that's going to happen here is that TrueNAS is going to ask us to test our changes for 60 seconds. And if it doesn't get confirmation that we want to save our changes within that time, it will revert the changes back. The reason it does that is because this is a network change. And for the vast majority of its users, we are probably connected over the network and not directly to the machine itself. So if something goes wrong, we wouldn't be able to fix it automatically. Rolling back after 60 seconds means that you are free to make a mistake and TrueNAS will auto correct itself. So here I'm going to go ahead and select test changes. It's going to ask me to confirm that I want to test the changes. I'm going to select the confirm checkbox and hit test changes, and then it will apply the changes. So we may or may not get disconnected here, but even if it looks like you haven't been disconnected, it's a pretty good idea to go ahead and test the network connection. So we can see here, something seems to have changed. I seem to still be connected to the device, but if we go ahead into the browser and try and restore it, then we get prompted with our login page. So this is expected. I am able to reach the page. It does look like everything worked correctly, but maybe you're getting a network timeout. And if you are, you should just wait 60 seconds and then try again and TrueNAS will restore its config to the previous known good value.
So once I'm logged in, TrueNAS is prompting me with a timer over here and the ability to save my changes if I want to accept them. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Save Changes and then Save Again, and then it's going to tell me that it's saved the changes successfully. So now that I've got everything configured, how do I know that it's working as intended? Well, we can take a quick look at our reports and see which physical device has traffic that corresponds with the lag interface. On the TrueNAS dashboard, we're going to want to choose the reporting option on the left hand side. And then once that loads, there's a kind of a little bit hidden drop down menu here over by CPU, the little uh, down arrow. We can go ahead and select network there, and then we'll get a series of graphs populating the network traffic. So if we take a quick look here at the Intel NIC, we can see that there are a couple of spikes in the graph indicating incoming and outgoing traffic in megabits. And then on the second graph, we can see the lag interface. We can also see the same spikes in the graph uh, as the Intel NIC. It's also measured in megabits. When we look at the Realtek NIC, we can see that there is a completely different set of traffic that has been um, reported here and that the traffic is being measured in kilobits. TrueNAS treating the Intel NIC as the primary is exactly what I wanted to achieve, so mission success on that front. There is one last final config that we need to do before we can step away from it, and that's to check out our jails. From the TrueNAS dashboard, we're going to go ahead and select jails on the menu on the left hand side, and then all of our jails will load. Now, this appears as though everything is okay. We can see that all of the jails are up, but if I pick one of the jails at random and expand it, I can see that there's an error being listed under IPv4. I'm not fully certain why my jails continue to fail after a lag interface has been created because the network interface they're supposed to use is automatically selected. You'll see now that auto is selected. I did try rebooting the machine to see whether or not the jails would come back online, but no such luck. So we need to go in here and manually intervene. The first thing that we need to do here is go ahead and turn down all of the jails. So we can select all of them at the same time and just hit the stop button. Once all of the jails have stopped, we can go ahead and expand one of them here and then select the edit option. And then when we get into the edit panel, we'll get a prompt that there is a connection error. We can go ahead and close that because that's essentially what we're here to fix. So under the VNet default interface, we've already selected auto. And as I said, I'm not quite certain why the lag interface is not detected by auto, but the fix is pretty straightforward. In this drop down menu, you just select the new interface that you've created. And then we can scroll down here and hit the save option. So once we start the jail back up again, it will take a few seconds to do that. But if I refresh the page here, we should get brought straight back to the jails page where the Plex jail is at least started back up again. And we can see here that it has started. If I expand it out, we can see it has been given an IP address and is no longer erroring. So we can just go ahead and do that for all of the remaining jails and that will fix any connection problem that we have there. That's it guys, that's how to set up link aggregation on your TrueNAS machine and solve some of the quirky issues that come with it. So if I can get you guys to go ahead and do the YouTube dance, which is to like, comment and subscribe, that would really help the channel out because it pushes my videos out to other users like you who may be enjoying this content. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.